the other thing that's that's just spending a lot of my time in my brain right now is really trying to get my head around what just happened this year and what just happened this year is new and and different for humanity about ai and and it's it's new and improved roles and abilities to enhance and enable um and also change our relationships to our patients to our knowledge to our jobs um and so on and i think that there's there's the fundamental um new role uh that ai is is taking on you know i i spoke about this at aan that you know in in a level 1 world ai looks interesting and it might be helpful and there was an exponential growth in in papers about hey look ai can do this and hey look ai could do that and hey look it can do this is not the same thing as go use this in clinic because it hasn't been validated we don't know if it generalizes it maybe only works in this data set that i tried in this special way and it's only in my hands because i'm so good at it whatever and that was level 1 level 1 is ai might be helpful level 2 is ai is helpful and i think that this year we've transitioned over from a world where ai might be helpful for neurology to ai is helpful right now and it's helpful in ways that i don't think people fully appreciate yet you can go online right now and use the the microsoft open ai's gpt4 which is the the next generation of gpt uh chat gpt and you can ask it a medical question and you can ask it as a patient you can say i have this and this symptom and it's bothering me because this and this and this and this is my background and if you ask it in the right way it will provide you with fantastically accurate and helpful useful medical advice Now does that mean that you don't need a doctor anymore? No, you need a doctor. But the information you get from there is going to be so much better than just doing us a, a web search that we've done up until now. The Dr. Google I mentioned before that there is going to be a new level of of an information parity, meaning the difference between what patients know and what doctors know is about to change incredibly uh because now patients will have access to extremely um detailed accurate and up to date information that they never had access to before at the same time the doctors will have the same thing which means that me a, an epilepsy doctor i will be able to know about the latest and greatest information in let's say parkinson's disease even though that's not something i spend all of my time reading about and when my patient comes with a a new drug for their heart that i've never heard of before then i can know that that drug combined with this diabetes drug that i don't know so much about combined with this neurology disease that i actually am not a specialist in all have an interaction i need to be aware of so having these tools to help patients understand themselves and doctors to understand their most challenging patients is a new today available tool that is just it's a new it's a new level of um clinical medicine this is what i'm calling level 2 where ai is helpful and i think the next thing that's going to happen after this and it's not going to take too long is the time when we get to the point where ai is required and that's level 3 so level 3 is we can't do our jobs without ai right now i can read eeg i don't need the ai to tell me when the spikes and when the seizures are that's easy and anyway the machine is not that good at it yet but there's going to get a, to be a point when i don't need to read the eeg anymore and it's just going to be a waste of my time because i've got 50 other patients waiting for me and i got other things to do and i know the ai can do it much more accurately than me but i won't be able to figure out the differential diagnosis anymore because instead of needing to know let's say 1000 diseases or you know 200 of my most common diseases i'm going to need to know 20000 and i need to know you know 2000 of the most common and it's not going to be possible anymore because they're going to change and the names of them are going to change and the risk factors are going to change and when new chemicals become available in the market and they they're baked into people's cell phones cell phone cases and they're touching people's skins and then it causes new neurologic diseases i'm not even going to know the names of the chemicals the the number of tests are going to be too many the number of and as i said this before the number of um treatments are going to be too many and the number of of contingencies you know with this drug combined with that drug combined with this chemical and so on all in this particular genetic susceptibility with this immune profile and and this gut uh profile of of different bacteria it's going to be impossible for one human to know all the stuff and even if they did two days later that information is going to be outdated and so we're going to need ai in that in that world and in a world when we need ai 
some people say that means that there is no doctor, there's no need for, you know, a human. And that's not, that's not what level three is about. That's, that's about a world where there is a doctor and you need them, but they're going to need the AI to help them in the same way that when I have to do hard math, I pull out a calculator or I pull out a you know, computer program and I still do it. I'm still the human driving the ship. But um, I don't care that I don't know how to multiply 10 digit numbers with 10 digit numbers and then take, you know, the 14th uh, root of that. It's not important that I can do it. It's important that I have a trustworthy tool to do it. And that's where AI is going in level three. And then the last thing is what happens next? What happens when even the stuff that I'm directing the AI can do, um, the AI can do. Well, then, then we've got this level four and then level four is wow, that's very strange, but that's going to be when I have multiple patients that are being directed by AI and I'm the director of the AI. So that's like um, having a bunch of nurse practitioners in my clinic doing things for me, but when things get complicated, then I step in. And I think that, that is, that's the direction neurology is heading. We're going to a world where AI is integrating so deeply into the fabric of what we do that what we do is not going to look anything like what we do now. And today we've entered level two and we're, we're headed towards these, these, these higher and higher levels. So I think that it's, it's very important to start thinking now about what patients want from their physician and what physicians want from, want to be to their patients in a world where memorizing things is no longer important in a world where making logical deductions and, and generating that very, uh, you know, cerebral differential diagnosis, that's just not going to be our, our specialty anymore. Our specialty is now going to be connecting to our patients and being there with our patients while we're dealing with difficult problems. And so, so it's, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting moment to live in. And it's a very important moment for us to all think about what we want and, and what we, what we should be asking our leaders, our, our regulators and, and our companies, what, what should we asking them for? What do we want?